um, we have just come out with the Jacquemus Autumn into 19 women's wear show. Um, this is the first review of Paris Fashion Week. We've got lots more to come, but um, Jacquemus is um, always opening Paris Fashion Week. Particularly interesting um, this season because he's last season for the men's wear. Um, well, not last season for the men's wear. Um, he was talking about really stepping away from this aesthetic that he's carved out for himself for the past three seasons. So. When you think of Jacques Mou, you think of this Mediterranean woman, south of France, the Riviera, um, lots of fantastic dresses, kind of handkerchief dresses, um, and sculptural shoes, and of course the teeny tiny bags and the hugely giant bags, which become kind of an Instagram novelty. Um, and he really wants to step away from that, and so for the men's, he was looking at this country boy, a farm boy, which he himself um, is, and lots more utilitarian and workwear shapes, straight legs, and and such and a lot of that got carried through to the women's this season um, so this season we arrive at this kind of giant location um, and there's a phenomenal set on the inside which is Place Jacques Mou and it's an amazing square literally we're sat in the middle of a square um, with a florist and some laundry hanging and some lovely little curtains and already you're getting the feel of kind of countryside south of France um, a little bit of a family feel. You can imagine kids playing in the square and grandpa playing boule. Um, so really amazing and everyone's running around taking pictures. Um, the invite as well was a tiny, tiny little square. Um, oh yeah, Cal, if you've got it, that's great. Um, and then there was a bag, a tiny, tiny Jacquemus bag created specifically for it. So literally minute, which I thought was comically brilliant because there's always a play on Jacquemus making the bags as small as you possibly can. There's been previous seasons with pill boxes um, kind of on a chain yes you can see <laughs> tiny tiny little check move in bite um and so already we're setting the scene of setting a scene that's much akin to the menswear that's um a little bit back to Jacques move roots literally where he came from feeling a little bit more countryside a little bit more um rural um, and of course quintessentially french um and so fashion starts coming out and we're looking the shapes are looking slightly more utilitarian and I don't mean um, kind of industrial, just slightly more countryside workwear. Um, so some of the trousers are wide leg with the multiple pockets like the menswear had. Um, shoes, for example, are no longer sculptural heels, they're kind of structural wellies and some of them are trompe l'oeil, I keep pronouncing that wrong, trompe l'oeil, um, which means that they appear to be, um, kind of, that they appear to be trouser and then ankle boot, but actually they're knee high boot and vice versa. So there's lots of that kind of trickery of the eye going through, which I really enjoyed. And um, as I said, kind of stumping great wellies rather than these delicate um, shoes that we know Jack Moo for. So lots of sculptural heels normally with balls and chains around the ankles. And um, Jack Moo was saying backstage, well, Simon was saying backstage that um, he wants to push away from that because those shoes are so heavily copied and lots of high street stores are going absolutely bananas trying to rip those off in different ways. And, and um, rather than kind of come back and do them his way he was like I'm gonna step away from those and just try and try and go back to what he originally got into fashion for which is experimenting and being a bit more creative and um, it feels it did feel particularly with spring summer 19 sees for women's wear that he was kind of coasting a little bit and feeling a bit like oh I know what does well so I'm just gonna kind of keep doing that and reimagining it in slightly different ways but this was actually quite new for Jack Moo and whether that works well and whether um, I'm not entirely sure it feels like this was a little bit of an amalgam of trying to challenge um, himself and trying to come up with a new um, narrative or revisiting what got, what he started with in the first place while also keeping the customer happy because it's doing incredibly well as a brand for the accessories um, so you kind of don't want to upset you kind of don't want to break it if it ain't broke but also um, he wanted he really wanted to challenge and um, bring back some of the roots of what got him interested so some of the really winning pieces for me um, were the um, jackets that are belted some really nice fleece trousers also the colors um, Jack Moo does like does amazing amazing colors there's this beautiful periwinkle blue that was throughout really nice warm oranges as you can tell we're big fans of orange <laughs> um, and some of the slightly more strappier looks again there's this more small kind of workwear and aprons and big bags on on the uh, hips layered up um, as if I saw them as kind of workwear utility belts but actually uh, Simone backstage was saying that it's kind of a comical play on kind of that couture shape and so that kind of ex that explains where we're going with this collection so there's elements of ultra femme ultra um, Jacquemus that we know and love and all these elements of slightly more rural slightly more rustic slightly more 
work wear apron straps and belts and such and such like that so a little bit of a mixed bag i'm for me i'm excited to see where this goes next season because i feel like he'll slightly have ironed out the kinks a little bit um it was a little bit kind of i know i want to do this but i need to do this as well um and while the collection was really beautiful and i think there's some items that will do exceptionally well it was a little bit disjointed for me what did you think Carl? i think i think simone's enjoyed a lot enjoyed the last kind of four seasons of you know he's people get into fashion to try and build a customer base and get people involved in their world and that must be such an amazing feeling. So he's had that for, for you know, he had the massive success with the heels. And it's very brave to walk away from that and be like, that's not what I want to say. Mm. And I think people remember him for that, but I remember first time seeing his work and he was kind of this enfant terrible of fashion, of Paris fashion, <laughs> who was making quite in incredibly hideous clothes that were so exciting and filled, you know, but they, they were quite ugly. So yeah. You know, it's quote on quote ugly they were like big blue cords with like a red cut out here on the knee yeah and just showed like a quite weird bit of the leg yeah. and that, that, that's my first memory of him so I'm quite excited that he might be going kind of back towards that more kind of in not, not that the clothes weren't intelligent for but that kind of diff, that intelligent way of playing on ugly because mm. it went so sexy which was a challenge to his ugly face do you know what yeah. I mean so it's nice that he's playing playing with himself in that way playing with his own history and his own internal thing instead of just riding the wave and then, yeah. being, and then cashing out um, I agree that the first time you see the first time you see something new it can take a while to sit so it'll be interesting to see in the next few months when editorials come out when he's done a few more interviews when yeah. he you know he's also understood it because these designers are working until the first model goes out on stage they're still yeah. updating the collection so they might not fully understand it yet as well so I'm excited to see how the communications around the collection go yeah I think well. it's I think he said backstage as well that some of it's already sold like a large chunk of the collection's already sold oh might oh. be accessories <laughs> might Amazing just be the accessories him. so yes yeah, that's it, quite an interesting yeah. like um well, that's why I think it's exciting about him is that as I say he's playing with all these things he's like could I sell this collection before anyone even sees it and you know it's, you need people like that you need a few Mavericks Mavericks. <laughs> Mavericks out and about but I think it's a really exciting step in a different direction and knowing or based off past experience most people lots of people will start to follow him if he starts stepping in one direction there's a huge line yeah. of people who, wa who want to be right where Simone is yeah absolutely and actually when you were talking about the earlier shows that reminds me that he's got a lot of kind of arty architectural interior design references in this collection which is much akin to what we first started with yeah. Jacques Moose and the giant kind of squares poking off skirts and stuff yeah, well, like and elements hands. of that and there was nods of that here with the kind of there was beautiful paintings inspired by ceramics and some trick of the eye straps and, and belting I think we're almost getting to yeah. that point the textures were incredible lots yes. of knitted things and I, I love his knits always and he had kind of odd knitted trousers that were kind of a bit Weird and looked a bit like wool and fur. They were just yeah, odd. They were, I, I they were odd. What they were. They were... I, I think they were knitted. Yeah. Is what I was reading them as. But there, there were some odd textures. Textures where you don't norm. You know, you can imagine a big kind of jumper mm. made out of that fabric, and then to put them as trousers, and then under leather, and you know, there was, there was lots of plays with what where you consider things to go, which I think is really really exciting. As I say, I think the more we see it and the different people start interpreting it and this new direction he's going in we'll all start to understand it more yeah and he did say backstage he was like I wish I had some stuff I wish I could show you more because I think there's a lot more than meets the eye mm. to to the garments that we're not potentially seeing yeah. in the in this wonderful plaster of yeah like there setting. were there were dresses that you could l that lay down but then you could also hook them around your neck and they were nice yeah. little vesty crop top lots things of things that and, double in different yeah. ways which I think is really smart and a nice move from the sexy dress into this kind of yeah. sexy but also like from day to night or yeah. like from work to party or I really like that idea yeah so overall a great start to Paris Fashion Week really interesting to see where this collection goes um, and yes congratulations Jack I would say um, lots more streams to come make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of our wonderful live reviews um, and if you're watching on YouTube make sure you visit the show studio so you can um, watch us analyze the collection with all the collection images um, see you guys very soon